Dear all, I am Dr. K. V. Nisha, working as Scientist B in All India Institute of Speech and Hearing, Mysuru. Hope all of you are maintaining social distancing and are keeping safe during this COVID-19. So why am I here? This is a part of a public education material which is aimed to make you understand about how brain reacts to different auditory stimulants. Usually audiologists get the hearing threshold checked or assess the hearing sensitivity using subjective response. That is, we ask the patient to either repeat what is being said or press the button whenever the sound is heard. This task becomes rather very difficult, especially in the case of children, because they cannot either follow the instructions or they fail to respond subjectively. It can also be difficult in the population such as adults who do not respond easily subjectively because they want to exaggerate their hearing loss. So what can we do? In such conditions, we record the brain potential and that objectively indices their hearing sensitivity. So these are called event-related potentials, which is nothing but the brain's response to different auditory stimuli. The auditory stimuli can either be a simple tone wherein the to uh, uh, wherein a beep is given and the response is elicited or it can also be something like a uh, task related potential where you attend to a stimulus and the brain's response is generated. Procedure involves making the patient sit comfortably on a reclining chair. Then the electrodes are placed. The sound is given through the transducer. Here are the inserts. The recording can be done either in a single channel or a multi-channel. Basically, in a single channel recording, as you can see here, only one electrode is placed and the response of the brain to the sound is recorded through this. In a multi-channel recording, it is picked up by multiple electrodes on the scar. So, in both of these recordings, that is in a single channel or in a multi-channel recording, the uh, patient is given with two tasks. Either he can passively listen to the stimulus where a video is being played, which is muted. Or he can actively attend and discriminate the stimulus. For example, a sentence with an ambiguity, that is, Ram is a girl, can be given. And the brain understands that Ram is not a girl, but a boy, and generates a particular potential, which is what is being recorded and analyzed. The outcome of all of these analyses results in brain waves, which can then be related to specific areas in the brain which generate them. So, audiologists. Uh, get multiple applications using these uh, event-related potentials. It has applications in uh, studying the maturation effects to know the neural plasticity uh, in cases of degenerative disorders like Parkinsonism or multiple sclerosis to understand the age-related deficits or even to understand the treatment effects. So, the basic question is, what do you do with all of this knowledge? The answer is this. Here at the institute, that is AISH, being a premier institute in the field of speech and hearing, we have all the state-of-art technology for recording and analyzing the brain potentials. We use it in day-to-day -day basis to analyze the hearing sensitivity as well as the hearing aid trial for individuals, both children and adults, with hearing disorders. Uh, this facility is available to the public 9 to 5.30 on all the working days. Also, we have a lab which is totally dedicated for the advanced multi-channel equipment called Facility for Auditory, Advanced Auditory Research, wherein uh, pioneering research in the field of brain potentials is done. So I take this opportunity to request each of you to make use of such facilities available at AISH. I also request you to educate your friends and relatives of all these aspects. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe.